Hello and welcome to this week in sports for January 12th, 2016. First show of 2016. First show in a while, actually. I'm Mike McClung. This is Tyler Dabransky, and this is Evan Olawani. We're going to start today a little bit different. We usually start with professional football. We're going to start with college football today because of the championship game. What did we see when Alabama defeated Clemson 45-40? It was a close game. You know, I thought it was going to be a blowout. Honestly, I thought Alabama was going to beat, you know, beat them up really bad, but Clemson, they really surprised me. Deshaun Watson really showed me what he can do, and I thought that he really stepped up his game this last game right this year. I, I think Deshaun Watson, like Evan said, surprised me too. He threw for 400 yards. You don't see that in college football a lot, but also Nick Saban pulled out a trick out of his head, had an onside kick, which I think really helped Alabama, and I just want to say, Mike, I was right. Alabama did win. All right, well, yes, Alabama did win. I don't think there's any doubt Clemson and Alabama both were the two best teams. We were all two for three on our picks, so nobody's really head over heels above everyone else. I just want to give credit to the college committee that picks these teams. I don't think there's any doubt they got it right this year. The two best teams were ranked one and two, whatever order you put them in. Really, Alabama won that game, but it could have gone either way. There was a lot of big plays. Clemson failed to cover. Alabama had, I think, three touchdowns that were combined, about 200 yards. So you take those plays away, big plays, and Clemson's really right in that game, and they were still right in that game to the very end, and it's just Alabama happened to get an onside kick, a couple trick plays that worked in their favor. They yeah, ended up winning. It. Alabama's quarterback didn't show me too much, but really, Derrick Henry, he led that team to the victory. I think there's really no doubt about that. He really just ran all over Clemson, and Clemson the first half couldn't figure it out. He had, a, I think, two touchdowns and over 100 yards in the first half, and I think that really set the tone for the rest of the game in a way. I think the uh, Alabama defense came up when it mattered the most. Like They needed to stop at the end of the game, close to the end of the fourth quarter, and they got that, which helped Alabama secure the victory. So I want to give not only Derrick Henry, he did do a great job, but I want to give it to the whole Alabama team for the victory because even though Jay Coker, the – Alabama cornerback didn't do that well. The other parts of the team picked up for him. Absolutely, and obviously this wasn't the only bowl game. What other bowl games did we see that you think had a big impact? That's, that's a tough question off the top of the head, but, you know, I think Navy. I like the Navy game against Pittsburgh. Navy really, they were like, oh, okay, they didn't verse anyone good this year, but they came out and they played am amazing. Reynolds really just threw all over Pittsburgh, and they really just dominated that game, and I was surprised about that. Uh, I'm going to say the Ohio State game against uh, Notre Dame. Joey Bosa, the first one of the first plays of the game, he gets he a gets, uh, penalty for targeting and is out of the game for the rest, which is a huge impact. Of course, Ezekiel Elliott, who think I think is going to be a star in the NFL. Yeah, that's, he was really the difference yeah, in that yeah. game. He just torched you know, Notre Yeah, Dame. so I think that game to me was my favorite game to watch. I really thought somebody was going to say TCU Oregon. We that was, that. I was just about to say I that. I was going to pick Houston, but you got to go with TCU Oregon. I'll make the case for both. That game went into what, triple overtime? It was 31 nothing at, and they at came half. Back. And they came back. One of the biggest comebacks oh. in bowl history. TCU, hats off to them. Oregon played a good game, too, and it really, that was an exciting and game to watch. The quarterback got hurt, and they couldn't do anything on offense. Right. That really tells you how much you know one player is to a team sometimes, especially the quarterback. Yeah, but I mean, they, they were injured all year. He was in and out sometimes, and then he was actually suspended for that game, and I think that's what inevitably. I mean, it hurt them, but then they ended up getting him back no, in. I'm talking anyway. about Oregon's quarterback got hurt a half. Oh, yeah. And then that's right. what My happened apologies. with. And then TCU's with, you know, quarterback also wasn't yeah, in the wasn't starter. Yeah, it was just, I just can't believe they came back from 31 points. Like, And then the Houston game against Florida State. I don't know. Maybe that's just me. Maybe that's rooting for the little guy. But Houston played a really good game. That's really going to help them recruiting, beating a major team that won a championship and then was in the top four the next year. I mean, Houston, that, that's a great win for them against a really good program. Mm -hmm. um, I, I did not actually see that game, so I wouldn't know. But Houston, I, like you said, is a little guy. Florida State, who, who just had James Winston and went to the national championship, won that. And then they were in the first ever college playoff. So I think that will help their recruit recruiting base, like you said, make it better. Absolutely. And their quarterback, I think his name is Greg Ward. I know it's Ward. He, he's awesome. He is. Yeah, he's, he's, he's really one of the most fun special. players to watch <laughs> in college period, you know, any sport and across the board. He's, he's exciting. Anyway, on the professional football now, we're in playoff time. We haven't been able to talk about it in a while, but right now we're down to eight teams. Wild card weekend has just passed. What did we see in that? Well, I'll start off with the Pittsburgh game. You got to start off with that game. The Bengals should have won that game. They had it in their hands, and they blew it, and I, that was so upsetting to me. Okay, let me ask you something. What was worse? The, the, um, Your pick. The Bengals? The Bengals losing or the Vikings losing? What was worse? I'm going to say, all right, they're both pretty not disappointing losses, <laughs> but I'm going to have to go with the Bengals just because not one, but two times their defense, two of their top guys, Adam Jones, Adam Pacman Jones, who's a reliable cornerback, and Vontez Bufik, who's a pro bowler, both of them costly penalties to make Pittsburgh get that field goal. Like Blair Walsh, I know he kicked the 47 laces out, and but 
kickers are it's always in their head. We saw that with Billy Cundiff a couple years ago, like the when Raiders, he missed yeah. it. Yeah, like it always happens. Like that's. But but, I don't know. I gotta disagree with you because the Vikings, they're a, a small team and they're finally playing good. No one really thought they were gonna be good. And then they have the game in their hands. They really outplayed the Seahawks the whole game. There's really no doubt that the Vikings really should have won that game. Mm -hmm. Just Peterson fumbled, and they just blew it for themselves. And a 27-yard field goal. There's so much has been made about the laces out. I, I don't care. You're an NFL kicker. Yeah. Kick it through. I feel for him. I mean, it's horrible. It's a horrible thing. But I feel really bad the for kick, that. They had other opportunities to win that, that too, game. And he's, he's, he's a great it. person. And you really feel sorry for him. But that's a kick he has am, to make. Am I alone on this Bengals thing? Does yes. any I couldn't disagree with you more, to be honest. Wow. The difference in that is wow. the Vikings <laughs> had the game won. If they kick that field goal, the game is over. The Seahawks have 20 seconds left with no timeouts to uh -huh. score a touchdown or a field goal. That's probably not going to happen. We've seen some miraculous things, but okay. to me, that's almost out of the question. The Steelers were still in that game, penalty or not. There was about 20 but seconds. But if he ran the ball, they really, they basically had the game. They if, if, if Jeremy Hill didn't fumble it, oh, the yeah, Bengals absolutely. won the game. They, there was a lot of things leading up to that. Like I feel... The Bengals, like... They blew it for themselves. Yeah, they blew it for themselves. Like, the Vikings did blow it for themselves. Blair Walsh blew it for them. 27 yards. I think I could even kick that. But, but, I don't know. I just, I don't know. I think the Bengals is the worst loss. I mean, I think it's a bad loss altogether. Yeah, but, because they had it in their hands. But, you know, fumbles happen. And, uh, you know, well, maybe for the, happen. Happen. for the Bengals, because they're like 0-7 in playoff games now. And that hurts game, a so lot. And that that's adds the big to thing. It. But you to know, me... Oh. I'm sorry. It's just that the Bengals, at that point in the game, didn't have it locked up yet. It was still a game. It, as much as, as slim chance as it was, the Steelers were still in it. They would have had at least 50 seconds to drive down the field with no timeouts to get a touchdown. Improbable, yeah, but when you got Ben Roethlisberger, even when he's hobbled, and Antonio Brown, who can make plays, you got a shot. If you're Blair Walsh and you make that field goal, the game's over to me. So I think that's where the difference lies. Okay, you know, the other games, you know, Packers. Yeah, Packers spent a lot of time on those two games. The Packers. In the playoffs, they're going to win. There's no doubt about it. They're, they're not going to lose to the Redskins in the playoffs. That's it. Uh, I was actually scared the first like couple <laughs> oh, yeah. drives. It was 11, 11, nothing. 11 nothing. The safety happened. I was like, this cannot be happening. We have Aaron Rodgers. This is not fair. But Aaron Rodgers came out the second half throwing to James Jones. James Jones had a good day. Eddie Lacy in the running game with James Starks, he had a touchdown. Their defense did all right. I mean, Kirk Cousins, you like that? I mean, <laughs> oh, he doesn't like that. That was a cheap yeah, shot. Right I there. mean, I mean, the Packers should beat the Redskins. I don't think that's any question. I think the Packers, honestly, they're not playing good enough to get past the Cardinals and the three other teams in the NFC right now, to be honest with you. I don't know. The Cardinals come I, off a bye. I don't know. The but let's just talk about one thing. The Chiefs are so good. They won 30 nothing. They can give the Patriots a hard time. Maybe they can win a game. I actually see them winning that game, to be honest. I don't because it's Tom Brady in the I, I actually see not the Patriots losing, but the Denver losing the Steelers. That's my big upset. I don't know. I, I think Denver and Manning... This is like his revenge thing, and uh, I don't know. I don't think he Manning does. doesn't impress me. What scares me is that the Steelers are without their best receiver and most likely their number two running back, Angela Williams. They're going to be stuck between the three and four with that. Ben's still hobbled. It's going to be a tough game against a really good Denver defense. The offense doesn't scare me, but they may only need to put up 14 points to win that game. I, I think if the Steelers can contain Peyton Manning, who I know he came out and he won the game for the Broncos last week, but he still hasn't played that much. So if they can contain him and make him have not that big of a game, they have a shot, in my opinion. We're real quick. We're, we're running out of time. Yeah, so let's just do a... Uh, Super Bowl pick, Patriots and Packers, because I'm a Packers fan. Go ahead. Super Bowl pick, like, who, who's going to win? I, I was talking about who's going to win, but Tyler oh, gave us both. Who's going to win it? Patriots are going to win it. I, it hurts me to say it, but they're going to win it. Packers? Packers are going to win Super Bowl. I think I'm gonna go with the Cardinals. I love yeah. the Card. I do love the Cardinals, but something about the Packers and Aaron Rodgers in the playoffs. I think any That's NFC like team Evan. could be any AFC team at this point. When you're the Cardinals, you got guys like Carson Palmer, David Johnson, Tyron Matthews is injured, but it doesn't even matter. Patrick Peterson. I'm just listing guys right now because that's what you sound like me a couple weeks ago. I was also the stack guy. But uh, that's going to wrap it up for this live rendition of This Week in Sports. Reverend Owani and Tyler Dabransky, who are both underdressed completely. I got a bow tie. I don't know what you say about that. But. I'm Mike McClung. Have a great day.